In today's video for Resolve Fusion, I'm going to show you how you can isolate a 3D object for 2D compositing using its object ID property. Now here you see I have two different 3D objects and I have them brought out into 2D using Render 3D. But shown here I could toggle back and forth and have the brightness and contrast affect only one object at a time when it's brought into 2D. So in this video I will show you how to do that using the object ID property. So here you can see I'm in the Fusion page of Resolve 17.4.6, and I have a 3D scene set up here. So I have a cube and a sphere, which is just basically 3D objects. And I have them set up here, and I rename them using F2. I have them connected up to a Merge 3D node. I also have an ambient light and a point light, so you could get some shadows on the objects. Then I have a camera 3D set up here. I have all that going out into a render 3D, where you can see the objects here. Uh, to get the lighting and shadows uh, viewable in the viewers, I right-clicked, went to 3D options, and made sure the shadows and lighting was selected for both of the viewers. And for renderer 3D, you want to make sure that under lighting and controls that you have enabled lighting and shadows. So basically what we're going to be doing here is uh, by using the object ID property of each of the different 3D objects, we're going to be able to limit what gets uh, affected by certain nodes once we bring it into 2D after the render of 3D. So if we come into the cube here, if you look under object ID, which is under the controls in the inspector, you can see what the object ID is. And uh, Resolve automatically assigns it or Fusion automatically uh, assigns it to each object. So for this example, the cube is object ID 4. And if we come down to the sphere, we'll see it's object ID 5. So the trick to this is, is knowing which of those ones are for each object you have. When you come in and render a 3D, you'll have output channels. Now most likely this won't be open to view. So you just click on it. And you want to make sure you have object ID checked. And that basically forwards that out after the render of 3D. So any other node that can uh, isolate by object ID, we'll be able to use that information, and most nodes can. So here I have two different examples. So first I'm gonna do the brightness contrast, which is what I have set up already. So if you come over to the settings tab of your node, you'll see you'll have, by default, you will have nothing checked here. So when you see by default, the brightness contrast is affecting both objects. But if I click the checkbox here for use object, you now can isolate by object ID. So right now I have four, which is the cube. If I move this up to five, you'll see it affect the sphere instead. I went past it there because there's five. And if I go back to four, you see it doing the cube. I can do the same thing here with a blur node. So if I put that in the second viewer by hitting two, selecting it, hitting two, I can do the same thing. I come over to settings, make sure I use object is checked. And then again, you can either go four or five. So right now five is selected. So if I come up here, increase my blur size, you'll see it is affecting only the sphere. Go back to settings and change that back to four. That'll be the cube. So now it's affecting the cube and go back to five. That'll be the sphere. Now you can manually set the object ID. You just want to make sure it's a, a, a unique ID for that object. Now you can also use that for if you want to use, say, a mask, but you only want to mask one object. So right now I have brightness contrast here. I'll put that back in viewer two. And I will come up to the controls. So I'll turn the gain way down here. And then I'll add a rectangle mask to the brightness contrast. And you can see right here, it's only affecting the cube and it's not affecting the sphere. Now, if I was to go into the brightness contrast, go over to settings and uncheck use object, you can see it's affecting both. But if I have that selected, so this makes it easier to composite in the 2D uh, when you can isolate different objects and limit effects to just one or the other. So hopefully you found this video useful and I thank you for watching.